vacuum often filled by younger, wilder youths. The report due out tomorrow calls for more support for families and communities to prevent youths from joining gangs in the first place. Patrick Regan is the founder of XLP, a youth charity which carries out gang intervention work. He's also written several books on gang culture and he's here with me. Patrick, thanks for coming in. No problem. So what went wrong with this idea of removing the gang leaders then? Well, I think, you know, enforcement is really, really important, but I think it's naive to think that tactical enforcement alone will be able to solve the complex nature of gang culture. So what often happens is you take out the, the top guys, then the younger guys come through, often more violent, um, vying for position, and, and also in this sort of strategy, you know, you've got a lot of girls involved in gangs these days. Where do they go? And they're vulnerable, and sometimes they've got kids as well. So I think for us that are working on the ground, we're saying very, very clearly that we need enforcement. We know we do, but you've got to have it alongside intervention that tackles the root causes. Otherwise, you'll just be chucking these kids in jail, and they'll be coming out again. I was in a young offenders institution uh, a couple of weeks ago, and they said they've got 35 gangs within this jail. And uh, so we need to really tackle the root causes. So, so why are people so attracted? to gangs then what is it I, I, again I think it is a very complex issue you know and uh, there's things in our control isn't there and there's things that aren't in our control I often say to young people wrong choices lead to more wrong choices then your life gets defined by those choices but if you're living in the context of poverty a context of addiction a context of high unemployment a context of anger seeing your mates killed suddenly making the right choice is really really difficult and uh, when you're surrounded by that type of context but if you speak to anyone that's got out of that culture they'll say you know what there's this one individual that came alongside me and believed in me and targeted me and just kept going and i believe that's what we need to do Tough, intelligent engagement as well as tough, intelligent justice. Well, that's the thing David Cameron was talking exactly. about, tough and intelligent uh, justice. So it, it, I mean, how do you translate that onto the ground, particularly with gangs? Well, one of the things that we've been doing is um, we've been mentoring kids on the verge of exclusion. If you read all the reports that kids get excluded from school, they've got a far more greater chance of being involved in gangs. You know, and we had a, a girl recently, we called her Grace, and, and uh, she had no mum and dad, living in an auntie, living on the toughest state, and uh, she had boundary issues of older guys. And uh, so her mentor started addressing the root issue that was low self-esteem and started to see an incredible change, so much so that six months ago her school rang up and said, you know, Grace, we want her to be deputy head of this school. Mm -hmm. In fact, she became deputy head girl, and that's what she is today. So it is tough and it is a long haul, and it may take a generation, but we need to look at breaking the cycle. And is, is there enough in place at the moment to give support, for instance, to groups like yours and to maybe other, get other groups to come in and help? Is the government doing enough? No, I don't think they are. I think it's very, very short-termism. And uh, if you look at some of the money that did come out, it, you would only allow to apply for it if you're working with over-11s, for instance. Um, it was very short term. Again, you know, I mean, I, I run a charity, XLP. I'm not going to run a project for six months. I've been mm. working in these communities for 20 years. Uh, you're talking about over 11s. What, what age do these children start getting involved in gangs? Is well, it we, below 11? Oh, yeah. I mean, definitely. You're seeing a lot of kids who are below 11 um, because, again, they don't often get searched by the police. And uh, we get primary schools ringing us up. In fact, I had one this week saying, can you come in? We were recognising gang behaviour in the younger guys. And so it's starting a lot younger. Um, I think girls are getting involved more. And I think the level of violence now, back in the day, there was this code of the street. And uh, that's sort of gone as well. But we have to break the cycle. When I was in this young offenders unit, I was with this young 15-year-old lad in his cell, which was tiny. And uh, he was banged up 23 hours a day out of 24 when he first went there. And he had pictures on the wall. And, uh, and I said, what are those pictures? And he said, oh, they're my, you know, my, my uh, nephews. And uh, then he went, uh, they've just been taken into care. And I'm looking at the pictures on the wall, looking at this kid that's obviously been in care as well, and just think, this just keeps going round and round. So tactical enforcement alone will not solve this problem. If it's not solved, what happens? Well, then you see an escalation of some of the violence that we've seen because, you know, you, people get angry and then suddenly, you know, I often say it's like the Incredible Hulk. You press the button on them and suddenly they explode because all that stuff they haven't dealt with in their lives. And, uh, and, and that's what we don't want to see happen. And, you know, across London, across this city, you have got the most amazing voluntary sector living in their communities. They haven't parachuted in from outside. And if they live in their communities, surely they understand their communities better than anyone else. So I always say invest in what's working, please, mm. and not just go for the, the do, stick do, approach. Just, just briefly, do you, do you find sometimes that because there are groups like yours doing this work that people think, oh, well, it's, it's happening, somebody's doing something about it, I don't have to bother? Yeah, I mean, we all need to take responsibility, don't we? It's interesting, I was in another interview about the riots, and one of the people was saying is what we really lack in this country is character, and that the rioters showed no character. 
And I said, you know, I agree with that, but doesn't that go for our bankers and our business and our leaders as well? And if we're talking about character, about generosity, compassion, kindness, then that's something that we all need to be involved in, as well as the young people that we often um, demonise. Okay, Patrick Regan, thank you. Thank you.